Hi there, I'm your host, John Iverson, uh, coming to you live from somewhere between Quebec City and Trois-Rivières. I'm on the Liberal bus. Uh, we've been in seven provinces in about five days. Um, strange, strange environment. It's like being on a school bus trip crossed with a junket to Las Vegas. Um, we're, we're having fun tr tracking the Liberals, but um, let's chat about the campaign. Joined as usual by Marcello Monroe from... Uh, a principal at Macmillan Vantage Policy Group, and by Andrew Balfour, who's the managing pr partner at Rubicon Strategies. Uh, guys, I'm an expert by now on the, the Liberal Leaders Tour. I, I haven't been on a, a bus with other journalists since 2004, when I was with the Liberals for the last two weeks, uh, which was painful because they were struggling. Um, so I'm curious, does it still smell gross on those buses? And what do you think the mood is of our liberal colleagues that you're traveling with? Well, on the smell, um, there are a lot more women on the buses these days. So I think that that has, uh, has had an impact on the, on the hygiene levels. Um, it's, it, you know, it's true. That it used to be the boys on the bus. And there, was a, there was a famous book and movie about uh, the McGovern campaign in 1972 in the States. It was exclusively male. That's, uh, I think now the males are probably outnumbered by the females. It's very civilised. We now have full Wi-Fi on the buses which, and the planes, which we, was, we, we did not have back in 2004. Blackberries were the new gadget in 2004. Blackberries had just come out and, uh, you know, obviously everything's speeded up exponentially since then as far as the news cycle. So, so a very different environment, but, um, but still as gruelling as, you know, the long march. You end up, uh, we flew from Hamilton, Ontario to Vancouver, uh, spent an overnighted in Vancouver and then flew all the way back to uh, Quebec City in the last couple of days. As for the mood, um, you know, things have not gone as planned. It's clear. I mean, I think uh, the Liberal leader pushed for an election because he wants to, uh, he wants voters to um, fly him to the stars and let him play among the stars, or what's to fly me to the moon and play among the stars. I mean, he's, he's got this vision of wanting to do big, big things. He's, he talked about this morning at a press conference. Not quite clear what those big things are, but, but obviously he wants to talk about that stuff. And yet reality has intruded, you know, consequential events like Afghanistan, which have required his attention uh, as prime minister. Uh, but he seems to be more concerned about uh, being the liberal leader bidding for a majority. And I think that that's hurting them because I think a lot of Canadians are, are seeing that as kind of naked ambition at the expense of these poor unfortunates who can't get out of Afghanistan. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's early days yet. I don't think we're going to see any great widening in the polls until after Labour Day. But, uh, you know, they tell me that they expected things to be tight, but I don't think they expected them to be this tight. What are you seeing from, from your perch, Marcella? Well, I think that, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, look, I think last week we, we said a few times, the three of us each in turn in our own ways, that can't, you know that people weren't really paying attention. I mean, I, I think some people are paying attention. You've got to think that that's, a res that that's what we're seeing in the polling tightening up a bit. Um, you know, will it be vote determining? I don't know. Um, I think, you know, O'Toole continues, in my view, to sort of, be impressive. I mean, today he was, he's been on this kick for the last few days of really wanting to talk to, to workers, right? So he today was talking about gig economy workers needing um, some kind of government protection. Um, and he's been not shy about saying, you know, we feel like we can go toe to toe for, uh, for workers' votes from the NDP. So that, that's been interesting. I think Jagmeet Singh has had a, a, another good week. Again, no party leader really has had major gaffes. And so I think partly what this means for the Liberals to add kind of to the tension for them is that, to your point, uh, when was the last time a major military operation was central to a campaign? Like it's, it's a big distraction. It's pictures that Canadians won't feel comfortable seeing. The government of the day has to respond to all these questions about why weren't we better prepared? You know, why, why aren't we able to get more people out or why couldn't we get more people out sooner? So yeah, we're still in the summer campaign, but it's it's just that they can't my point is that they they are it, they struggle with staying on message because of these other global events yeah and I, and I think that even if the afghanistan thing has has um evolved 
by the time that the election comes around, it does still speak to to leadership and um, you know question marks, I guess, against the way that uh, Justin Trudeau has tried to keep one eye on Afghanistan while you know today giving out uh, forty two dollars a month increase in GIS to poor seniors. So I just want to come back to one thing that you said, though, Marcello. You said um, uh, that O'Toole's looking at the blue collar vote. Do you think that they, there's a gap there that 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 blue collar vote is disillusioned? with the NDP because they have kind of moved on to identity politics and left behind their their uh, their, their kind of blue collar roots? I'd be, I'd, I'd be interested to hear Andrew on this. I mean, in short, I would say, yeah, maybe a bit. But, but you know, the NDP and the Conservatives for a long time have had some of those blue collar votes that they've been fighting over, right? So this isn't new and it doesn't really have to do right. with identity politics so much as just, um, you know, those voters have traditionally been swing voters that almost all the parties, well, at least the three main ones, have, comp- have competed for in different ways. What do you see, Andrew? I think the main thing on this, oh, well, I think the main thing on this is that um, the O'Toole campaign, which has a lot of, uh, kind of call it Queen's Park, uh, Toronto, uh, conservatives have seen how Doug Ford and his team have done incredibly well at courting, uh, particularly the uh, construction unions and getting them on side and I think that they're trying to emulate that. We saw that um, a few weeks ago when uh, Aaron O'Toole did a uh, town hall with the head of the Ontario Building Trades and was, you know, they've both Doug Ford and Monty McNaughton, the Labour Minister in Ontario, have been very successful at building relationships with Labour and I think that the Conservatives in Ottawa are trying to do the same thing. But another thing, though, what you were talking about, how people are, you know, caught by surprise by this. I mean, the, like, 30% of Canadians or 30% of Canadians who are going to vote are always going to vote Conservative. Like, that's their number. Like, that's basically their floor. When people saw that O'Toole was at 26, you know, that's not that's a soft number when you really get down to it 30 percent of canadians are going to vote conservative and they're going to turn out at the polls so for anyone to think that they're like you know in order for justin trudeau to get a majority government he has to be 35 with o'toole at 30 and with the ndp much lower and right now with o'toole kind of doing some more left-leaning things the Liberals need to hope that maybe some of the far-right vote ends up going like to Bernier or Maverick. Like those are, there's a lot of calculations in play for all of those things. Yeah, and again, I still don't think this is new territory. I think we're seeing it in a different light because the Conservatives traditionally federally haven't been as active as they are right now. But over time, again, in the past, Conservatives have vied for those blue-collar votes in the past. As of the Liberals, I mean, this isn't this isn't new. Do either of you think the two-tier O'Toole thing's sticking? I think that it uh, bothers a lot of people uh, that are already not going to vote for him. Um, I, I think that a lot of the things that uh, have come up as issues during this campaign are things that upset committed voters. I don't think we've got to a point where there's a lot of uh, accessible voters uh, who are moved yet, because I don't think that those accessible voters are really still paying attention. I think a lot of what we're seeing is in the people like us who pay a lot of attention to these things. I mean, I buy that. I, I will say, though, again, back to what we've seen from Afghanistan the last 48 hours or so, there was a moment there where I thought, well, you know, at first the Liberals kind of I wouldn't say they mucked it up, but it wasn't the cleanest hit they could have had. And yet there we were talking about private versus public care and the mix that we have in Canada for, you know, a couple of days at least. So at that point, I was thinking, well, you know, this isn't a bad footing, even if to Andrew's point, it's not moving voters, but it's better for the liberals to be having that debate about how much private care we have or should have and, and, and that being part of the narrative. But now, once again, you have a couple of bad days of news from Afghanistan, um, you know, and hearing Canadian Armed Forces, people get very um, emotional today. Uh, so they've kind of got off that message. So we're no longer 
at least today, and it will shift, right? But we're no longer on those key messages I think the Liberals want. I think, too, that the to this point, uh, and kudos to them, the Conservatives have run a very clean campaign. Um, they've been able to stay on their track, and to think that they're going to get through another three and a half weeks without any missteps or fumbles is a thing. So I don't know whether they've peaked at this point, but they need to be ready to deal with some of the things that the Liberals have had to deal with at this point, which is some, you know, bumps in the road along the way. But I, I, I do get the sense um, that the Conservatives, you know, they came out with a very f full platform and they've been very disciplined in the way it's been rolled out, whereas this campaign I'm on does feel a bit shapeless and amorphous and you know one day we're talking about one thing and another day the next and most of those announcements are incremental progress on things that they've already done and you know I think the, the, the populace is looking at it and going well if it's so brilliant why didn't we do it six years ago and there doesn't seem to be anything that has caught uh, has caught uh, caught fire yet and I'm wondering are we any closer to a ballot question I, th I think a really big thing uh, about this is that Justin Trudeau, we've seen this in multiple campaigns and even in other events uh, since he's been in Canadian politics, he thrives off crowds and rallies and that gives him energy and he can't have that this time and I think the fact that... Well, he, he, did, he, he did get a bit of it yesterday. We were in uh, Steveston, uh, Fisherman's Wharf and uh, I ended up, uh, he actually ended up, uh, he ended ended up giving me a clenched fist as if he was giving me constructive criticism on some column, columns when we got a, a picture taken. But he was totally pumped. He was totally pumped. That's the, and he is missing that for sure. Yeah, that's the guy who goes and wins elections. The guy who you can put in a yeah. crowd with thousands of people where he just gets like jacked up. That provides him energy yeah. and, you know, I mean, that's true, but yet I take John's point, though, right? Like, that may all be well and true. And again, we talked about it last week. Like, no one should count out Justin Trudeau anytime soon. He, he loves elections. He loves campaigning, no question. But I would still say in terms of a ballot question, if your ballot question right now is, did the Liberals get a good, do a good enough job during COVID that they deserve your support once again, and perhaps with a majority, um, I don't know. I, I feel like that was their question on day one. I don't know that that's the question that will win them this election. I, I feel like yep. O'Toole's narrative right now, because he's not, you know, he's critical of the government, but he's also presenting a very forward-looking alternative, right? He's He's been talking about yep. things he would do differently for the future. Um, okay, but and, and Jagmeet's been kind of, you know, I think so far quite successful in saying, like the LTC thing, and I know what you're going to say, Andrew, it's a provincial issue, like, sure. But having pictures of seniors that were, you know, badly treated and talking about the fact the federal government that, you know, pension owns those, that company, and we should do something about it, like, I think emotionally that's going to connect to people. So where's the emotional connection for Trudeau right now? I'm not seeing it except for his supporters. I'm going to butt in here with host privilege and say that uh, we're going to wrap it up early because uh, we're hoping and praying that this downloads okay from the bus and we don't have to do it all over again so anyway thank you very much for uh, for watching and andrew you'll get first first dibs on uh, a pro-liberal response next time ha. yeah thanks guys safe travels buddy